out in here. So this should come out looking real nice and then we'll de-rust this and then uh, it's assembly time again. It's now a, a day later <clears throat> and we're pulling our parts out of the purple power. Alright, that's it. Put this right here. I will immediately <laughs> dry off my hands. Now, a lot of this stuff that you'll see on here, on these parts, is rust. So after, always after the degreasing, we de-rust. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up all these parts here. I'll take the camera, I'll shut the camera off, and we don't need to see us wiping down all these parts, but <clears throat> I'll, get, uh, I'll get everything cleaned up, dried off and everything, and then we're going to get it ready for, uh, for the de-rusting. Alright, rusty, rusty. First what I'm going to do is I'm going to just throw these, these little screws in there. <clears throat> what they do is they, they give these things uh, something to sit up on. So uh, the deruster gets all through it. <clears throat> all the set screws. Uh, these little, these little guys. You know, it's it's got a fair degree of rust on it, as does these. Now, these will come out beautiful and silver. There's no pitting or nothing like that, which is great. This, this of course, is going to come out silver, and then we're going to polish this nice. Uh, this doesn't need to be put in the de-ruster, for obvious reasons. This guy, definitely. This, uh, I don't know about this guy. There's really no rust in here, but you know what? We'll put it in anyway. Why not? This guy needs it. And this bushing, definitely. But, <clears throat> put this bushing like that. Put this on the side. This, there's no rust on here. This could just be hit with the scotch bright in, in some areas, just just literally, just to clean it. That's about it. Now I have the, this, uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to do this in a different bin, uh, along with these handles, because these two, these two, actually all three of these need to be uh, purple powered first to get the, they're full of grease and uh, gummed up uh, flood coolant. All right. Let's move our clean diaper out of the way. One of my subscribers told me, you know what? Turn it this way, and it'll force some air to come in there, and it'll pour steady. And what do you know? This stuff is famous for glop, 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 all over the place. And I will say this, this evaporust is very old. You see how brown it is? It's pretty much spent, but we're going to see if we could get a little bit more out of it. <clears throat> close it up so we don't uh, evaporate and now we go over and watch our daughter go cheer so I'll be back tomorrow I have some bigger parts here too that need it um, you know like these, this wheel and this wheel I'll just sort of I'll clean up, you know, I'll, uh, this is cast aluminum, there's two other cast aluminum pieces in there. So what I'll do is I'll just sort of go through them and just clean them. They don't necessarily need to soak, per, per se. Um, there's another, this is cast right here. These two are cast and there's one more. Don't. 
display. There we go. This is metal, and these three are cast. So these dials, in fact, I don't want them to soak. <clears throat> so what I'll do is I'll just put them over here. These will just get cleaned up. I don't, I don't really like the idea of the Purple Power soaking in on cast. Um, it hasn't really damaged any of the cast aluminum. Um, but again, that's probably because I don't let it soak. I don't know if it will hurt it or if not, but I just don't want to take any chances. <clears throat> you know, I'll say this, when it comes to restorations and fixing things up, if, if you don't have a source for parts, don't take chances that you don't need to take. You know, uh, Yeah, you don't want to take unnecessary chances and possibly mess up one of your parts. I remember one time I was I was restoring a South Bend 9-inch lathe and I got the the counter drive which is uh, completely made of cast aluminum and I soaked it in lye. <laughs> so all of the all of you out there who know about lye and cast aluminum, it's a big no-no. You don't want to do that. Uh my wheel, the 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 wheel came out, it was all pitted and um, literally started to be eaten away by the lye. So there are certain chemicals that don't play well with certain types of metals. We're gonna we'll wash these up by hand with a brush once this once the steel is done, and we'll be good to go with that. It totally cleaned up the parts, nice. I remember when I was doing my Bridgeport, the mill. Um, the same thing happened. I, I soaked the quill, right? I took the whole quill apart, the upper unit, the head, everything. Every part that had paint, I cleaned in purple power. And the paint comes out beautiful. I mean, even has like a bit of a, the original shine to it. Obviously, this is all rusty. We're going to de-rust all that and everything, but it just really just takes all the junk and all the, the, the dirt out of here. And you're left with this very durable paint. Bridgeport had a really good paint system. I think I mentioned it earlier in the video, but you could see how thick it is. I mean, it almost looks like, um, I don't know, like a thin set under there. Their filler that they put. I'd love to know what they, what they used to do. It's very thick. Durable, durable paint job. So I'm not going to paint this. I'm not going to strip any of this paint down. Like I said before, I just, uh, I just don't feel like doing it. You know, it's, it's a rotary head. And as I'm starting to find out with, you know, with many of my lathes and everything, and even the Bridgeport mill, um, you know, you restore something, you go through a lot of work to get it nice. And uh, it gets dirty. <laughs> That's a big bummer. Uh, I shouldn't say it's a bummer, but you know, it's it's that reality that you know you're restoring something that's inevitably just going to get filthy. You know, people restore cars, and you could keep cars really nice and clean, um, but not not uh, not machines, not lathes and milling machines and stuff like that. So. Another candidate for de-rusting. Just got a little tiny bit of the surface rust on here. And, you know, this stuff comes right off. It, um, very, very fast. You know, it doesn't take very long. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this down. I'm going to set this aside. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you what the de-rusting is starting to look like now. Nothing was all that dirty. You know, just had a little bit of surface, surface grease. Uh, some surface rust. None, none of this is, is really all that bad. But as you'll, as you'll see with this, this was all rusted before. This piece right here. And voila. That's actually really nice looking. <laughs> Just 
just nice and clean. And the Evaporus leaves this kind of this nice little protective film on there so your parts don't flash up on you. That'll be my drying area. And this here will be the, the display area of all the nice clean parts. Okay. Let's just stick our fingers in there. That's one of the things about Evaporust is you can barehand it all day long. It doesn't do nothing to you. It's very gentle. Hey, not bad. Okay, there's two bushings in here. You can see one, and then there's a recess, and then you have the bushing on this side. Looks like all this stuff is done for the most part. Again, it was only a couple hours. I thought it was going to take most of the day, but you know, when you don't have a lot of rust, most of the surface rust just comes off in an, an hour or two. So I don't want to get too ahead of myself here. Now, if you'll remember this piece. See, it just has like a little bit of staining, if you will. Doesn't really matter. You're never going to see this piece. It's an internal piece. That just holds a, a uh, bushing, but completely smooth. I'll take some uh, uh, Scotch-Brite and just clean it. Make sure it's all nice. <clears throat> ah, let me show you this one. This was the handle. Alright, continuing on, we got our table locks here. These are just nuts, bolts, little fasteners now. handle yeah nothing is rusted anymore got it all off Now for all these nuts and bolts here, I just put them in here and I just tumble them just for a couple minutes just to get the heavy liquid off of them. And then it just evaporates, dries, it leaves a protective coating on it and we're good to go. So I'm going to put 
put these in a cup. Okay. Now, Um, will these fit? One will. Actually, I do not want to do that because what will happen is you'll get a line. You'll get like a tan line when you flip it. So I've got to find a bigger, a bigger thing here and put these three parts in. Okay. Now, over the years, I've collected all sorts of little bins and different things. You know, you could you could go to like Target or one of these dollar stores, and and man, you could get a lot of different little bins and stuff for part soaking and whatnot. So this will fit just perfect right in here. Well, it doesn't it doesn't go to the bottom, but it's good enough. soak for a couple of minutes and I think that will be good this guy this guy will fit right in here I wonder if I have enough to cover it and to fully submerge it Probably not. No, probably. All right. All right, well, we're going to just have to do one at a time. No harm. No harm, no foul. So we'll let that cook for a little bit. And that'll be that. I just pulled this out and it's completely derusted. This is mm, 10 minutes later. Beautiful. Came out great. give a check to this and uh, this still has has a little bit to go the ways are clean well what I can do is help them along a little loosen up some of the now I don't really like doing this because it defeats the purpose but I'll just put that back in there cook for a little bit more. I don't know, I'd say about another 20 minutes or so in there and that will be good. And then I'll put the next one in. Now I got some other um, uh, some other parts that I'm taking off of the table that I I, I got and I'll uh, I'll get them ready in a second. So what I'm doing is just putting all these parts in a little bin, get them out of the way. Dollar store.
think these uh, these cast aluminum pieces they do they get they just get mealy. I don't know what it is. It's the paint or what, but they just just don't like the way they get when they're soaking. So just set that off, rinse it off. I'll most likely buff this piece out. I definitely, yeah, I like dials that are nice, that's for sure. And I really don't think that they can put the same kind of finish on, uh, you know, paint finish on cast aluminum. I don't see a lot of that heavy filler like they use on the steel. Yikes. This is the veneer, so I do want to clean that up nice. What I was thinking about doing was mounting this on the lathe and uh, truing it up if it needs to be trued. I just have to see. I haven't really investigated it and really analyzed what the problem, if there's a problem, but if anything I could put it on the lathe and just clean it up with some different polishing compounds and rags and stuff like that, some rouge meant for aluminum. Because you know, I don't. You could see it's it's all scored here. That's scoring. Um, well, I'd love to have a brand new one of these. That's for sure. I wonder if they make these parts still available from Bridgeport. But in any case, what I'm going to do <clears throat> when it, when all is said and done. You could see that, um, I don't know if the camera picks that up, but that's the veneer right there. And I'll get some, I'll get some uh, uh, shoe polish, or, or not shoe polish, I'm sorry, you know, some like paint. We'll put it in there, let it set up a little bit, and then you come and you wipe it off so it, it falls inside the little, the little cutouts in there. Same with this one.
this is looking pretty uh, yeah this I'm gonna I'm gonna give my final recommendation don't soak your parts in purple power that are aluminum clean them in a different way they just don't look they don't look like they take to it all that well So here's the piece. This is this looks like black paint actually, all this right on here. I'm gonna take this with soap and water up into the sink with a brush and really clean it up nice, you know, like a gentle cleaning because this cast aluminum, you know, you never know. Uh, here's another piece that I that that's part of the table, so we're gonna pop that guy in there and uh, the bushing that goes along with it. I got another one to take out and we'll put that in. Well, we got the pieces out. This this little stud just screws right into place, uh, and I just I got some pliers on it. Didn't 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 you know mar it up? Didn't squeeze it because I was afraid I would mar it. It left a couple little little bite marks in there, but it was not anything that was tight, you know, very tight. So we'll polish them out when all is said and done. But for now, they soak. Well, it's a couple minutes later, 10-15 minutes later, and we got our handles out of the de-rusting solution. And just as you'd expect, they're all clean. No more rust. See? The waves are nice. And I'll probably just scotch bright them or something. Just make sure that they're they're all good, protected. Okay. One down. Another one to dig to go. So these pieces just came out of the purple power bath and they need to get into the de-rusting. So we're going to just drop them down here. And then we're going to pull our last piece out of the de-rust solution here. This one came out really nice because I've been leaving it soaked for a while. Alright, so, if you remember what this thing looked like, it's plenty rusty. So the handle is just beautiful and clean, as is the ways. I'm actually wiping rust back onto it from this rag. It must have some rust on it or something, but... Not bad. Not bad at all. Paint is completely clean. We're good. Now I made the tool to take off the spanner nut so I could remove the table. Um, and I was filming making it and then I finished making it and 
with the camera off, yeah, I uh, I went and took the table off. So I'll, I'll show you that now. Got our parts in our purple power bath, and we're just gently scrubbing and cleaning. I don't have anything big enough to soak to fully submerge these things in. Now this guy over here, you could see I have a bag, a baggie, over the over the. Uh, the ball bearing, the roller bearing, I have it zip tied and I have this. This is just to keep any dirt or any kind of liquid out of it. Because we ain't, we're not touching that. So I'm just you know going through and cleaning any grease and any dirt. Now a lot of this residual staining that you see here is really just rust. So that will that'll come off in the de-rusting stage. All right, well, we're going to just continue on and on and on and on, and when it's all done and dried off, then I'll bring you back. Not a lot of paint left over. Didn't didn't hold its paint job very well over the years. Yeah. Well. All right. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to work on that one, and uh, this will be ready for derusting soon. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this little piece of bronze here to prop it up <clears throat> just to let air get under there and you can see a little hardened grease ring up here and that's what we're going to be taking off with this brush I don't want to press too hard let the, let the degreaser do most of the work but just gently trying to take it off this is such a nice scraped surface. What I'll do is I'll I'll roll this it's like a little roll and just let it sit on there. All done. All cleaned, all dried. Uh, while we're, you know, we rag dried it, so we're just letting the air take over, but <clears throat> got everything degreased. It's uh, it's pretty much as clean as it's going to get right now. Um, obviously, the next stage is going to be the de-rusting bath, evapor rust. That's really going to clean all the scraped ways up real nice, this whole surface under here. Um... And again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be floating this uh, with this part up because I don't want any of this uh, bearing in here to get touched by any of the de-rusting fluid or anything like that. This all in here is all clean and it's nice. <clears throat> so my, my hope is that I could float it in a bath that will just come up to about, you know, just cover this table here. The gears are flawless. There's no rust in there. There's no nothing in there. And... Uh, and the funny thing is, is there was no grease on these gears. No grease, no oil. I guess all the oil kind of made its way and, 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 you know, gravity pulled it away. But when I turned this thing before I took it apart, it, it felt, it felt like it was in a bath of oil. There was no, there was no grinding or nothing. The gears were very smooth, uh, you know, just perfect. So we're going to, we're going to just leave these guys as they are. We're just going to de-rust it probably right up to about you know midpoint right here and we'll clean that table off and it will it'll definitely brighten up and be nice and silvery and you know all the all the uh, witness marks and the graduations here will kind of pop out a little bit more um, yeah that's about it so let's get ready for de-rusting so when you don't have a suitable bin to soak your large parts in, what do you use? Well, a garbage can. Now, I do not know 
how much of this will fit in here. Um, I really want to put something in there to kind of display some of the water because this is very big. It's you know it's probably four inches um, too big. So all right, we put some old bottles in there, and now we're going to fill, and hopefully we'll we'll have enough. Although I really don't think we will. Not by a long shot. Getting close. Just may work. This heavy piece of brass to hold that down. Okay. Well, we'll leave it in for, I don't know, a little while. And that should be it. This is air, this is watertight, so it's not leaking through into, into our bearing. So I think we're good. All right, we'll be back once it's done. Table's out now. Now we have the base in there, and I have it. I have these pigskin, because I don't have enough room to, uh, to fully submerge it. So I have this, uh, this pigskin on here. And every now and then I just kind of keep it keep wetting it. It, sh it stays wicked because the corners are kind of dipped in the reservoir. <clears throat> Nothing Bridgeport ever made was lightweight. Now, what we're seeing is some rusting. <laughs> Believe it or not. Now there's water content in this and if you uh you know this 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 was draped with that pig skin or that diaper and it it kind of dries out a little bit and it it I don't know it doesn't have the the liquid content and the actual water content I don't know if I'm saying this right but you know it, it leaves a little bit of rust on the top here All right, I'll work on that, but I want to dry it all off. Um, but the cast iron looks great. <clears throat> so basically, this is just moisture that's sitting on here between this and the diaper, and the diaper, I think, comes off of it, and it builds up some moisture, and then it flashes. So that's what we're seeing here. We're seeing some flashing... Um, And that's that. The good news is, is the table's going to be covering it, so it's not like it's going to be aesthetically ugly or anything like that. Um, we will we'll use our Scotch Brite with some WD and clean this thoroughly all around it. That's the one tip I will say to everybody: if you don't have enough evaporust to fully cover your part, completely submerge it, um, then don't. You know, don't use it. So I'm just cleaning all inside, all the crevices. I gotta use the Scotch Brite to clean this bearing journal right in here. You know, another thing that I did was I just poured a big amount of water in there. And uh, typically in the past, the water kind of reactivates it and brings it back to life. Um, but I do think that the water, obviously, um, <clears throat> you know, will will thin it out and uh, water it down, so to speak. And you don't get the the rust, uh, the de-rusting strength of the fresh bottle of it. So now I'm spraying a little WD here, 
since I'm not worried so much about, well, I'm not worried at all about stripping paint or repainting, I can go ahead and get this thing oily again. So a little WD with a Scotch Brite will work wonders. get some oil down in there. Just to kind of prime it. Alright. It's nice. It's smooth. And it'll it'll turn just right. I mean, it, it turn you know it spins with your pinky, <clears throat> but yet it it stops. It's resting now. Nope, not yet. <laughs> nice nice you know I mean it's I could do it with one finger but yet there's you know there's some drag because it is sitting now on the ways <clears throat> so that's good all right it's time to bolt this puppy back together now <clears throat> 